All right, you slavering dogs, it's Jim Sterling here with one of my never really all that popular, but they do okay, trailer reaction videos. The Xbox Showcase was yesterday at the time of my talking, and I didn't watch it because I fell asleep, and I was asleep on the couch for like an hour, and then I woke up and felt really quite queasy. I felt quite queasy since yesterday, I don't know why. I ate a baby bell to settle my stomach, I don't think that's helped. And I got my glass of water, yum yum. Keep yourself hydrated, keep yourself safe. So anyway, um, I've not seen the Xbox uh, game presentation, the showcase, so I'm just gonna watch it all now, and you can watch it with me if you want. Uh, this is all new to me, all of the, the trailers and content. The showcase had a lot of dislikes on YouTube when I went to get the, uh, the presentation to, to talk over. So people weren't all that thrilled with it, it seems. So I'm gonna watch it and I'll be the judge of whether it's good or not as a presentation. So, all right. This is Halo, I'm assuming. I don't know all that much about Halo, to be honest. Halo is not my thing. It's fine, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, it feels and looks plasticky to play for me. It always has. Um, from the first one up to, what was the last one I played? Halo 5, The Guardians. The Guardians one, which was bloody rubbish. And I didn't even want to play it and review it at the time. I was still doing game reviews at the time. Uh, but there was this one Xbox fan who kept bothering me and saying I was, th I was a biased, biased reviewer against Microsoft, famously hate Microsoft. Uh, so I wasn't doing reviews of Xbox One games. So I reviewed Halo 5 Guardians um, and deliberately got all of the story details wrong just to upset that one person. And it was a fairly mediocre humdrum game. Uh, this is obviously the new one, Halo Attack Force Unlimited. So this is Halo Attack Force Unlimited, which is a new game uh, which will be used to presumably be the, the big foundation upon which the hype for the Xbox Series X shall be built. Good for them, people who like uh, Halo and the Master Chief collection, man. Good for them. Uh, so we get to start a demo now, because this is a gameplay reveal. They're letting us know what Halo Infinite is all about. That's what it's called. That's gonna be a long, long time to wait for the release, actually. That's significantly longer than after the console comes out. Looks all right though. Look how bright and colorful that is. Probably wasn't a good thing to have happened there. Right, a big old crash. Now you need one of those in a video game. What you want is you want to be on something that's flying. Then you want to crash. Then it goes black, then you hear that high-pitched whistle noise that you always hear um, when you crash in a video game, and then someone grabs you, and as you see, they come back to normal. Really animated face, though. For someone who usually complains about, uh, someone who literally just did complain about how plasticky and artificial um, a lot of Halo looks, that's really good facial animation on this. Which, by the way, is uh, notable for the fact that that's where I've been less impressed with uh, next-gen video games. Um, not that I think the faces look bad, but environment is where we're seeing most graphical games with some of these next-gen games we're looking at. And usually the faces don't look all that more remarkable than the current crop of games, just as a natural function of diminishing returns. Now, the face here is not, you know, blowing me away to the point of absolute stunness. Stun what what's the state of being stunned? In in the the sense I'm trying to use it. Hmm. What was I talking about? Okay, big guy. Alright. Yep, faces. It's a good face, you know. I mean, like I said, it's not it's not a massive leap forward because you play something like The Last of Us 2 or whatever and, you know, really expressive stuff. But there was an almost exaggerated sense to the expression on that fella that I... I realise we've long moved on from 
the man's face, but it was very expressive and I liked it. That it had a little over the top look to it, which helped. So anyway, that's flying around. That one didn't crash, so they're, the people on that ship are not gonna pass out and then hear a, a high-pitched whistle noise until someone else touches them on the shoulder or arm. Now that's one of the famous Halo cars that the kids enjoy in their video game Halo. Uh, it's called the Halo Pig and you drive it around and sometimes you can shoot a gun from it if you want, if you want to use the gun. And sometimes you can just drive around on a hill or a hillock. It's up to you. It's your Halo Pig. Drive it if you want. So as you can tell, Halo isn't my, uh, my usual wheelhouse. I have played most of them to varying degrees of completion. Some of them I barely even started. Some of them I have finished, completed campaign-wise. The online doesn't do much for me either. In fact, if, if you've come onto this video thinking, oh, I'd love to see Jim Sterling do some high-end criticism of the Halo series. <laughs> you will never see that. I'll just get that out of the way now. If you want to unsubscribe, because you'll never get that Halo critique that you've always longed for. I wouldn't blame you. All I know right now is that giant gorilla men are running at everyone's favourite Halo chief. That's a shield. I know what that is from video games. You throw a shield and then that'll shield you. So that's a good thing I know about Halo Infinite. That's what it's called. That was a fun shooting. I mean, I'll play it. That's the thing. I say I don't care much for Halo. I, I, I don't. But I'll play them. I'll give them a go. I'll always... I'll always hope to be wowed by a Halo game. They're not bad, they're just not my thing. Oh! Everyone loves the Halo theme tune. Oh! That's the Halo theme tune. Now, I know they are grunts, the little ones. I know that from, from Halo, that, that I understand. The little ones are called grunts and they go, ah, ah. And then the bigger ones are called, this is a fun game we're playing. It's called, guess what Halo Jim knows. There are ones called elites, right? And there's one, one of the elites does talking and is called the Arbiter. Look at that, I know my Halo lore. Halo Chief dresses in green and he hates the Covenant. He thinks they're dicks. So that's why he shoots the little ones in the head. And then there are big frog ones called Prophets and they're like, fuck off Halo. They tell Halo all the time that he should stop. And then there's ones called the Flood who are zombies. And then the Halos themselves are big rings that were put there by the Precursor Trilogy. I think I've got all this correct. Oh, and Cortana as well, who is that thing from Windows and is also a blue lady. That's all the Halo I know. This looks like Halo. If you like Halo, I reckon you, you, might, you might enjoy this. What, where's the gun that shoots the pink crystals at things that dig into their face and they're like, ah, get these pink crystals out my face. This is not ideal for me. They're showing a lot of gameplay. Which should be a good sign for the rest of the show. Right? The rest of the showcase. We get a big, big, fat, wobbly, delicious lump of... Who's that fella? Look at the chin on that! He's loving... What the... Oh, that's a beard. I thought he had a real long chin. That would have been brilliant. Maybe that's why the showcase has so many dislikes on the YouTube. Maybe they all thought that that bloke had a big long chin and was loving it. And it, and it turned out to be a beard and then they said, oh, screw this, dislike, dislike. Anyway, the, the giant bearded man 
basically a basically a cross between Kratos and the low cost from Gears of War. I don't know why it's called them the low cost, like that. He's very growly, isn't he? Huh? My computer is a piece of shit, by the way. I need to get a, a new one sorted out. Right now, um, the playback showing me the showcase is running with the kind of frame rate that Deadly Premonition 2 has had. It'll, it'll work itself out. There we go. You won't have seen that. It'll run nice and smooth for you, but everything I just saw there was a series of still images. Now, though, I'm seeing all this in its fully animated glory. And again, this is good facial animation. It helps that it's, it's a, a, like with the earlier fellow, there's a slight hyper-realism to it. That's what you want. A little bit of exaggeration really helps, uh, helps this stuff out. Cool. That fella was really into it. That made me more excited for the game. <laughs> just that fella, just the that big broody beardy bastard just banging on. Anyway, that's out Ola D2020, isn't it? I'm really curious about how this generation's gonna kick off. With with the whole COVID-19 thing and like we half the country the without bloody jobs. I'm incredibly we'll see. We'll see. We're thrilled to share a hint of the epic battles. Hello, Chris Lee. In the next chapter of Master Chief's journey. This is the most. I mean, I feel like it's it's mayhem to start charging seventy dollars for games while bringing out you know whatever it'll be five hundred dollar consoles or whatever they are. This year of all years, but we'll see. You know, the game industry doesn't let things like necessity or the world. Uh, get in the way of its desire to make money. So, you know, it may be successful. They just got to make enough money off the people who still have some, I suppose. It's a big risk in 2020, though, to release anything, any any high-end luxury, I would say. This is some good facial animation as well. They've done a good job on Chris. World premiere. Oh, fucking hell, what is this? Fucking The Keely Show. Right, so this is all way newer stuff that I don't know about. So what's this bollocks? I mean, there's some stuff I heard was announced, like this might be that State of Decay 3. In fact, looking at the timeline preview on the video I'm looking at, I can see the State of Decay logo a couple minutes from now. Actually, about a minute from now, maybe. It's, whatever. Um, State of Decay! I tell you what, if it's not an Xbox 360 game like State of Decay 2 was, then I'm all about it. Maybe this one can be an actual Xbox One game. Here's the thing about State of Decay, right? If you've not never played it, then by all means play State of Decay 2. If you've played State of Decay, you don't need to play State of Decay 2. It's the same game. None of neither one on its own is bad. But both of them have the same flaws, and the fact that State of Decay 2 didn't even address the very prominent problems in the first game. It literally was more of the same, and I don't just mean thematically or in terms of gameplay, I mean it was, it was the same game. So here we are, another new generation, another new State of Decay, and it better fucking not be State of Decay 1 and State of Decay 2 again. Zombie Dia. That's off to a good start. That wasn't any gameplay, so I don't know whether that is, uh, whether it'll be just more State of Decay or not. The foundation of State of Decay is very, very good. I was just incredibly disappointed with how slapdash the, uh, slapdash and creatively lazy, and I, I will say lazy in that situation, from a creative standpoint. It's how creatively lazy State of Decay 2 was. Here's Phil Spencer. Everyone wants to kiss him, I've heard. He's got a Halo Infinite shirt on. We're just going to talk about how he's dressed. And he's got that little tracky top there with the, the collar all high. Doesn't he look cool and handsome? Game Pass. Now, I've got thoughts about Game Pass. Positive ones. I, I've talked a few years ago 
about how Nintendo was in a good position to do a sort of Netflix for games, but was just too archaic in its thinking to ever capitalise on the embarrassment of riches it has for a game library. And for the past few years, Microsoft has been working on this Game Pass situ situation, this service that is similar to a Netflix for games, and it's good. You know, I played Carrion yesterday on the Xbox One for, like, free, because, well, you know, free, in quotes, for the price of entry. One thing that, that Microsoft's impressed me, and I said this on Twitter earlier, um, between Game Pass and cross-platform and the, the dual release on console and PC, as well as hardware stuff like that, um, oh God, I can't even remember the bloody name, the adaptive controller, I think that's what it's called. Um, the one designed for, for you know, um, people with disability issues to get into the games and, and play them um, in a more comfortable way. Um, all of this combined um, positions Microsoft Next Generation to be the console of accessibility. And as accessibility has become such a, a an increasing issue of concern, an increasing um, avenue to explore, um, as companies are doing, like we saw with uh, The Last of Us Part Two, the, the sheer wealth of accessibility options in there, some of which would do well to become standardized parts of, um, of the game experience. Um, Standardized options, I should say. They should, you know, opt in. Opt into high contrast mode, but high contrast mode should absolutely be an option in most games. Um, here's Forza, which is Cars. And as such, mm, not really my thing. I like racing games, but I like the arcade racing games, the more, the more cartoony ones, your Mario Kart, that kind of thing. Um, if there's an interesting gimmick, a unique gimmick in a racing game, I'm into it. But Forza, that's, that, that's closer to just your, your very straight-laced racing, and that's, that's not quite my thing. Um, but they are typically some of the games that show off graphics the best, which is why uh, when a new gen is out, Microsoft wants a Forza. It's, it's a simple plan, really. No idea what the fuck this is. Looks pretty, though. I like all the colourfuls. All the colourfuls and all the cartoonies. In every step, really lovely animal design. Look at the big floppy yellow eared thing. Of big cow, big floppy eared yellow cow lad. And then there was that deer in the background and a giant old tail. Look at that! That is a big old doggy! Big old doggy hold a tree in its tail. Yes, he does! That was brilliant. What is this game? This is the best game ever made. <laughs> Again, not seeing much in the way of gameplay, but that is a big frog thing. <gasps> it just dribbled. They dribbled gibble fish. I don't know how else to call them. They were big jelly gibble fish. And that big salamander new thing just went blah, and out they came. This is great! And to stand watch. Who came up with this? Oh. Our world has a rhythm. Are they dancing around it to make it feel better? Dance around the little animal, make it feel good. Now you swing that incense round. Yes! Yes! It's 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 alive and good! Fuck yeah! I'm into this. I know nothing about it. Everwild. Game Pass. I mean, that's... If, if you're planning on getting an Xbox Series X, then it, it seems to stand to reason that you should be interested in Game Pass. And if you do have Game Pass, every single one of these games is automatically more interesting. Because you're guaranteed to them. If you're already on Game Pass, you, you're guaranteed to be able to try these games. That is itself a, a risk on Microsoft's part, but... I feel like we've got too many subscriptions in the world anyway, and I am sickened by the idea of third-party publishers having their own bespoke subscription services. But conceptually, 
a subscription service on a console as part of that console service. That I am into. I mean, I played, uh, I, I can't even remember if I said it earlier in the video, I played Carrion yesterday on the Game Pass. I think I did mention it. Um, and I'm not into that game as much as other people are. Sorry if you hear any clomping, I've got my little glass of water here. I didn't, I'm not into that game as much as some people are, but it didn't cost me anything to try it and find out. I like Game Pass, and I like it because of the breadth of what it can offer, not just first party stuff, and I hope to see that continue. We'll see how many major publishers allow it. But stuff, stuff like Everwild, stuff that people might not otherwise try, if they push those right on Game Pass, that could be very good. That could be good for game developers, the ones that don't get your big AAA marketing budgets. There's a lot of potential positivity of Game Pass that could easily be fucked up. Microsoft could easily drop the ball. But I am interested. I won't say hyped up. We try, despite the name of this particular series, um, we actually do not truck with hype much on this channel. But I am intrigued, and I am... I'm interested to see where it goes. I have just spent all of this trailer talking about it, though, but that's the nature of us just watching this in real time. They're trying to learn something about Marianne and everything they thought they knew has been thrown out the window, so that's quite good. So it means I didn't have to watch the rest of this trailer. I could just talk about Game Pass. All the relevant stuff is now. Tell us about Marianne. Nice music. It just did a real nice ooh, which is good. Nothing good comes from stirring up old memories. Did it again? That was another ooh, and another one. Look at that. We're getting treated to all the ooh's. I like it when music has a, a good ooh, ooh, ooh in it. There was a little bit of a monster there. Tell me why. All right. Here's the thing. I would say. Oh, I might be interested in that, but again, Game Pass. <laughs> well, I'll lose five minutes if I play it and I don't like it in the first five minutes. And if I play it and I do like it in the first five minutes, I... Uh. Hey, I'm up for things that reduce the cost of entry to enjoying games. That's where I'm at, especially when we're seeing things like 2K games and, and Take Two, wanting to drive the prices up to $70 and make them even more prohibitive. I'm over that shit. Make games easier to play and make Hamilton easier to watch live. I know you can watch it on Disney Plus now, but you know. Enough of the elitism. So we got 60 FPS and 120 FPS. This video will not be rendered at 120 FPS, so this will mean nothing to you. But I'm sure it'll be good. I'm not. I'm not big on Oring. I played the first one. I didn't like it very much, and I uh, got to a bit. I think they patched it, but I got to a bit that was literally impossible to progress in. And they fixed it. But then by that point, I had other things to do. And that person who was really pissed at me for not reviewing um, Halo Guardians was also pissed at me because I did not. Um, give Ori in their opinion a fair shake, but I wasn't really enjoying the game all that much anyway. And then when I hit the brick wall, uh, that had to be fixed. It's more than my job's worth to continue. There are more important things for me to be getting on with. Right, what's this? This is your outer world. From the furthest reaches of the universe comes the biggest mystery in the galaxy. An abandoned research facility. The biggest mystery in the galaxy is how much Yves Jumeau knew about the abuses at Ubisoft. It's one that I'd very much like to see solved. So this is, what is this, DLC, in it for your Outer Worlds. I'm into that. I loved the Outer Worlds. One of my favourite games of last year. You give me a reason to go back in? I try, I want to, I want to do more DLC campaigns, because I always... I always, I typically, with the exception of some, forget about games once I've done the main one. And then once they throw out a DLC campaign or addition, I've, I've long moved on to something else. It's part of the nature of my job as well, you know. I can't stay in one place for too long in terms of staying within a game's ecosystem. There are other worlds to explore. 
Ironically, or fittingly, whichever one works. The other world's Peril and Gargan. Yeah, all right. Yeah, if I've got time. If I've got, if I've got nothing else on September the 9th, I might play that. Actually, isn't that, when's Cyberpunk coming out? Is that next month or September or? Can't remember. If you're waiting. But I'll play that game. I'll play Cyberpunk. The biggest, game of the, year. the biggest game of the year. That's what they just said Wait this is. For <laughs> That's wonderful timing. That was wonderful timing and some nice self-deprecation of this game. So I'm already more interested in it. I'm, I'm always more interested in a game that will tell me that another game is better than this. So it's basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which I'm okay with. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, that's a game, that's a film, rather, that could never be remade because they do it in CGI. And the thing about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is the entire appeal is how hard they worked on the sets and the practical effects. I, there's no reason for me to bring this up now. It's just a few months ago I watched uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids on Disney Plus for the first time since I was a kid. And even though everything is obviously fake, that's part of the charm. It's obviously a, a set and a prop ant and a, whatever ever, ever other bugs they had. But, God, I've got to stop talking about other things. That was a good looking game, sort of, I think. I was too busy thinking about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And now I'm not listening to Furka Circuit, who's now talking about Peril on Gorgon. But we've moved on. We're talking about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Tell us about your Honey, I Shrunk the Kids game. Aren't they working on some games set in the Pillars of Eternity universe? Can this be it? I would like... I would like the little Honey, I Shrunk the Kids game to take place in the same universe. You see giant feet of soldiers and, and warriors and wizards and stuff doing their Pillars of Eternity shit. And then underneath you see these little kids dressed up in romper suits hitting each other with slingshots. I've just invented a brand new game and it's their games, but put together. So where's my game development job? Actually, I don't want one. I don't want to be exploited, abused and harmed and driven out of the industry under a cloud of harassment. But that's just me. I already deal with some of that in my current job. Actually, I think this is that game set in the Pillars of Eternity universe. Since we're looking at flaming arrows and statues and listening to an English accent saying, oh, shoot a skeleton, why don't you? Now our oaths are lost. I might play this. Pillars of Eternity is that type of RPG that I just don't have the fucking patience for. Really well done, incredibly detailed and complex and, and everything, and just, I can't be fucked. But this is the more um, action-oriented one, isn't it? When was the last time we saw gameplay of anything? Was it Halo? Avowed! It was Halo, wasn't it? We're not even halfway through this fucking showcase, are we? We've gone almost 30 minutes, and I've kept up my talking, so I'm a, I'm good at my job. <clears throat> Lots of green. Right. Whoa! Map Booty coming in strong! Practically yelling at me as he comes on the screen. They told us that this epic game is the one they want to make. Epic game? Ah, oh, no wonder they dislike the video. Fuck those epic exclusives. Oh, from the ground up to take This guy's so growly and into it. Built from the ground up. Oh, Matt Booty, shake it. Developers, always with the goal of empowering them to bring their ideas to life. I'm excited to announce our work with Interior Night, a new studio led by some of the most talented storytellers. We got a new studio. Let's meet Caroline Marshall, studio head of Interior Night. Let's debut their original game. Why the fuck haven't we done it already? I like this modern warfare style map they have to let us know where people are. 
Now we know where Carolyn Marchal is. Because when you play a story, you step into the character's shoes. You get to experience their fears, their hopes, their conflicts. He's talking to us about what process, we feel you know like when we story. are playing a game. And this is quite powerful. Our first game spans 30 years okay. in the American Southwest. It's a story 30 years about in the American Southwest. And sacrifice. But most of it's about all, lots of themes. About how you will shape the fate of real, flawed people trying to find their way in a world they don't fit in. I hope you enjoyed the trailer. Oh, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Let's have a look. World premiere. You don't need to do world premiere. You're not showing off like the Game Awards have to. All right, let's see what Int Night presents here for us. We were on our way to start a new life that summer. Well, not, not the best animation. They look like they're barely moving. Uh-oh, that's a bag full of money. <gasps> Robberies! All of us that day. Was it fate? Coincidence? So is this... No. Is... Now, I know that so far we've seen very little in the way of gameplay for anything. I'm curious if... If this is representing what the game will look like? These sort of still images with the 3D... It's an interesting look. Oh wait, no, no. There's some animation. I said that would have been in probably an un oh wait, no. Still relatively still. I can't see it being popular with with the mainstream crowd, but it's I got your letters. I mean I don't even know if I could do an entire game that looked like that. And that's not to say whether the game looks like that or not. Who's to say what any of these games look like? I thought they said that this presentation would have a lot more gameplay than the last one they did. Including Senua Saga Hellblade 2, which we announced at the Game Awards back in December. Oh, I forgot there's a Hellblade 2. An incredible 3.5 million players have now experienced Senua's story in Hellblade Senua's sacrifice. That's a 3.5 million? That ain't bad numbers. That's real good numbers for that game. An experience that we'll be building in Unreal Engine 5 for Xbox Series X. And PC. I'm interested in this for sure. I liked the first game, of course. Saga will be set in the beautiful country of Iceland. Okay, so they're setting this game in Iceland, if you didn't hear them. You can find out more about our location scouting and how we've discovered the history of our setting. I don't need to know about location scouting. I'm sure it's interesting. Those are some gorgeous shots. But just show us what the game's more like. Just show us more of the game. There we go. There we go. Yeah, she angry. Look at how angry she is. There's a lot of people in the background there, which is interesting because the first game was, of course, so deeply personal. It's gonna be interesting to see if, if instead of being as introspective as it was, they have her interacting more with a, an outside world, especially if she's toddled off to Iceland. Right. What's this? Oh, double fine. Oh, this is that Psychonauts 2, isn't it? I've played Psychonauts a bit of it, but I only ever really I only ever played a bit of it. I really should get round to playing it. Did they, are they doing a remaster of the first one as well as the sequel? I can't even remember. I guess I should look that up, but I'm in the middle of doing this recording now. Um, hang on. I wonder if I can reach behind myself. Grab my phone. Where's my phone? I'm still, I'm still having to work under this fucking blanket until I, I get the office space. Um, so I've got to get under the blanket without knocking anything over with the blanket. Hang on. You all enjoy Psychonauts too. Where's my phone? Oh, it's fucking ages away. Hang on. It's a quiet place. All right, let's go over here, get my phone. Oh, come here, bastards. There we are. Now, 
phone in. Put the phone on my desk. Now I've got to get back under the blanket, still holding everything up. You can't see what's going on, but it's a fucking nightmare. Oh god, now the blanket's all creased up and bunched up on my head. I'm gonna have to push that slowly, slowly. Oh, what the fuck? An entire fucking bit of the blanket's gone over my face. Oh god, thank god I'm only missing Jack Black singing. There we go. Not that I've got any problem with his singing, but it's not much for me to talk about, is it? Right, okay, I've settled down. I like the, the... I like the graphics here, they're real nice. Obviously an evolution of the first one. I really should get around to playing more of the first one. It looked like it was going to be good, but I barely begun it. Psychonauts. I'm looking it up. I don't think they are. I think it's just Psychonaut. Oh, wait, no, Psychonaut's on PS4. Sorry, I, I realise I should be doing my job right now, but I am just curious as to the best way of getting hold of um, Psychonauts. Well, it's listed on the PS Store. How have I missed that? I might play that. Might be something to do. Maybe over the weekend. I don't know. Depends. I've still got a fair bit of Ghost of Tsushima to do. The game's fucking massive. It don't end. And now my fucking computer's doing that thing where it's not playing the trailer back properly again. Ruining the frame rate for me. I swear, I've got to make so I gotta make so many improvements around here. Once I Once I get the spare room again and I can turn it into an office, I'm gonna upgrade everything. This computer's bullshit. Right, so that was Psychonauts 2. Luckily I didn't have too much to say about it to begin with, so it was a good opportunity for me to fight, wrestle with a blanket and grab my phone, which, where is my phone? I'll put it in my pocket now. Can't have that on the desk. Because the vibrations of it will ruin everything and you'll hear the vibrations when the phone goes off. You don't need to know any of this information. Why am I talking? Why are you still here? Geographically, but in history too. Oh shit! I'm thrilled to announce that this fall, our friends at Bungie. Oh, um, Bungie! To Xbox Series X. Oh, has Bungie done a Destiny? Has it? Has Bungie done a Destiny? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I just decided in the last about two or three seconds that that's going to be how I treat Bungie from now on. I'm just going to very condescendingly uh, patronise them about whether or not they've done Destiny. It's weird what strange, desperate stuff you come up with to amuse yourself. Oh, what? Don't tell me this is a gameplay trailer for fucking Destiny 2, which came out in 2004, literally. Every moment brings them closer. Oh, I don't care. It's Shove it up your fucking ass. I'm sure it's exciting to people that find Destiny exciting. Well, I'm being a little bit unfair. Destiny 2 was a, a good time. I had, I had fun with it for a while. Like, it was a great time until I'd had my fill. I've got no cause to go back to Destiny. You know, when I see a Destiny 3, I'll do what I did with the last one and play it earnestly for about two weeks or so and then get bored. It's one of the issues with these um, service games. Aside from all the other issues with service games I've brought up in the past, these live services never keep me invested long enough before I, you know, I've moved on to something else. But that's the main issue with the game industry. They want, at the same time, to keep releasing games and having you buy new ones and keep you play, uh, paying in the ones you've already paid for. It's a mess. Hardware stuff. It's not my thing. I'm, I'm 
almost entirely software focused. I care a little more about hardware when we talk about handheld stuff, but in general, next gen console, I just want to know what games you've got. World Premiere. So this will be an exclusive at console launch. I forgot about all that. The uh, different ways in which we'll see the word exclusive applied. Not always in a way that means what the word means. Console launch exclusive though, that's fairly self-explanatory. It'll be an exclusive at the launch of the console. Let's have a look here. It's very dark and spooky. I'm very scared at the moment. I'm scared of the tunnels, and I'm scared of the lights, and I'm scared of the empty swings and roundabouts. What the fuck? No, not a little bolt. Not a little bolt flying hit the floor, and now there's electric. I'm just saying things that I'm seeing because I've got nothing else to. I've got nothing else to go on at the moment. Is this Quantum Break 2? That's my first thought looking at this. But then this is very The Last of Us, isn't it? Or just any post-apocalypse, really. Most of them. Whoa! Look at that manky little fucker in a jar. Oh, forget this. That's just a person walking through some trees. I want to have a look at the little pink homunculus again. Oh, wait a minute. I heard about this. This is Stalker 2. Yeah. All right. I remember Stalker. I played Stalker. Played it with the old mod that you got to play it with. The one that everyone says you got to play it with. Before anyone says, have you played it with the mod? It was pretty good. I had uh, good times in Stalker. I never seriously played it um, to complete it. I, I, I always just dip in every now and then. And I'm like, I'll play a little bit of Stalker. Run around and be scared. What's this? Is this more Stalker? Or is this moved on to something else? No, this isn't Stalker. Look at it. Look at, look at all this sci-fi bullshit. Or is it? Because there could still be some sci-fi bullshit in Stalker. It doesn't look like Stalker. What is this? My Lord Inquisitor. <gasps> My Lord Inquisitor. Oh, is this Games Workshop stuff? This is Warhammer. Warhammer's very different from Stalker. <laughs> Fat Shark. Mendoza. Do you remember Fat Dog Mendoza? <laughs> Fat Dog Mendoza. I remember Fat Dog Mendoza. It wasn't a very good cartoon. It didn't last very long. Whoa, look at all that. Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. I like the Warhammer universe well enough. I used to, I was uh, never wealthy enough to do much with the figures, but every now and then I'd buy a couple models and paint them up. That was fun. I don't think I've ever, I'll ever have the patience to try and play the game or have the patience to even sit and paint them anymore. Then again, if it does turn out I've got the HDHD and then I can actually concentrate on things, maybe I will paint up a little army, a little army of chaos marines. Not Slanesh-y ones. Everyone always thinks I, I would do Slanesh, but... Never interested me in Warhammer 40,000. What kind of game is that game that they just showed us anyway? What kind of game is Dark Tide? What kind of games are these games they're showing us? What kind of game is this? These are just people playing games. They know what games they're looking at are like. I don't know what the games I've been looking at are like, except for Halo, which is like Halo. Oh, God, this is so mawkish. And here's the thing, you know, fine. Have a nice little sentimental fucking thing about how lovely games is. But right now, some of us do not feel like games are all that lovely. <laughs> okay. They're just letting us know how how Tetris brings us together, really. 
in its way. Tetris is fine. I like Luminous more, but that's just me. And, you know, other people are happy to like that, you know, welcome to like the Tetris effect. I don't care. I really don't care if you like Tetris or not. Tetris is Tetris. And we got to see a bit of what that game was like, and it was like Tetris, so we're learning a lot. Is this that rad? Or the, the, the rogue-likey mutant-y? No, no, that was Double Fine that did rad. And that game already came out last year, so why would, why would this be that? Well, don't just go touching it. You've got a metal hand. Why did you touch it with your normal one? Don't touch strange things with your normal hand if you've got a metal one. This looks neat. This is gameplay as well, so happy with that. Sucking up globules with your big metal hand. That's my kind of gameplay. Oh, look at that. <gasps> monsters. Glob monsters. Pretty little game, isn't it? Pretty little cartoon game. The Gunk. What a great name. What a great name. I'm already, I'm already playing it. Again, I mean, it's got the Game Pass logo like most of these things have, so it's not a question about buying them. But I'll play that. I'd, I would buy that game just because it's called The Gunk. I'm not that hard to please. People say I'm a harsh critic, but I'm actually really easily pleased. Just call your game The Gunk and I'm in. Butterfly. Or Moth. I tried to cut myself off, but the voices, they just wouldn't stop calling out to me. That's what that bit of text said, if you didn't want to read it yourself. A forest. The moon. This looks like horror stuff. Pines. Could do with some good horror stuff. I've always got time for good horror. I like spooky things and monsters. And stuff going like that. A regular, rational one. But also a darker and deeper truth. This also looks post apocalyptic, doesn't it? Unlike a nightmare. We do love our apocalypses, don't we? Our apocalyes. I can lift them. Apocalypses. I reckon I could happily spend a whole afternoon coming up with plurals for apocalypse. Go through the giant yellow fanny. Hello? Anyone there? Dual reality gameplay. Two worlds rendered simultaneously. Oh, look how fucking clever they're being. <sighs> so when they say simultaneous, like... Everything's happening in real time. You're not just flitting between two different levels at once. <laughs> like my idea would that of that would be you're in one world and then events are happening in the other regardless. Although it does I don't know. I mean it looks neat. Looks like it's got a real mood to it. The medium. That's a nice logo. Like the art, the, the woman's head as well being dragged by the hands. That's a real nice image, real evocative. If you like. Oh God, this blanket is in such a horrible position. And there's been, I've had a big gap in the blanket coverage. Oh, there's gonna be all sorts of reverb off the back of that. The idea is to try and reduce the stupid echo in here as much as possible. I'm sorry about all that this year. Hopefully, you know, by the end of the summer, we'll be back to how how um, how things usually look and sound. 
Although the June position is mostly in a good place now that we've uh, got at least a recording uh, live filming space set up again. So we're not filming in the bathroom or in a random hallway or all the other stupid places we desperately tried to film in. What's this anyway? The Adventures of Anime Lad. Unknown threats, which I misread as throats for a moment. I would also play a game called Unknown Throats, and I would enjoy it. It'd be a glory hole simulator, basically. That'd be a good sim game, wouldn't it? Unknown Throats, a glory hole simulator. Run a successful glory hole. Someone else can work on that game. I'll let you have it. You can have the, you can have the Unknown Throat IP if you want. Yeah, that that sure looks busy. A lot going on, huh? The adventure starts now. Is the game out? New Genesis Fantasy Star Online 2. Well, the adventure doesn't start now, does it? It starts in 2021, you pillock. Time for a console launch exclusive. Oh. I want there to be a new Crisis game. Not the remaster. The first Crisis wasn't even very good. Crisis 2 was pretty damn good, though. I think Crisis 3 was good, too. I remember Crisis 2 I enjoyed very, very much. But this is Crossfire X campaign. Yeah, see it done. Save the world. Crossfire X campaign it. It's emotional music so that you know it is feelings. We protect our own. Can you protect me from fate? We got lasers, we got guns, we got Crossfire X multiplayer, which is free to Xbox Live Gold required subscribers. Shooting and guns and stabbing and stealth. Oh, it looks fine. Yeah. It looks like a shooter, doesn't it? That'll do. Today, you saw 10 world premieres and 22 console launch exclusives. Now shut up and fuck off. That's what he was saying, gonna say to us. I wasn't telling Matt Booty to shut up and fuck off. Why would I? This is just a peek at some of the new titles coming to Xbox Series. We're nearly at the end of this. Some of the games you already love. Christ almighty, what a way to spend my morning under a hot blanket with the air conditioning off, because that'd only make this sound worse. Nursing a sm uh, an increasingly small cup of water because I didn't bring enough under the blanket with me. You can expect a lineup of over 100 titles. And I like to drink a bit of water, me. It's important. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. Xbox is the place. But I think under this blanket, I'm losing more than I'm putting in. Of everything we do. Now, you may have noticed. We didn't get to visit all of our Xbox Game Studios today. They didn't visit all of their studios today. So they promised more to show. And I've got to say, though, like, World we are this close to a console launch. And I ain't seen all that much in the way of console, like, next-gen console gameplay. Outside of speculative stuff and non-gameplay trailers. And very carefully crafted, pre-presented stuff the world is filled with stories. but they had one more thing of legendary which is why people get upset at nintendo Treacherous. when they say that they're just going to show third party games and that's all they show when they do exactly what they said they'd do everyone wants the one more thing we talked about that on the gymquisition on monday figured i'd do something a little lighter 
um, Jimquisition wise. Not because I want to change the subject, but because I'll give everyone a bit, take the pot off the boil a little bit, give us some breathing room, and then um, come back to it. Go back to talking about fucking Ubisoft and stuff. This is Fable. I'd already heard that they'd announced a new Fable. Looks alright, didn't it? That's it. That's the lot. That was the showcase. The rest of it's just, I guess, a sizzle reel. Look at that reel of sizzling. Stuff we've already seen, anyway. Could have shown a little extra footage, but they didn't. So that was the Xbox Game Showcase. They really didn't... I mean, they showed the existence of games. So that's something. They all... A lot of interesting-looking games, for sure. And Halo. I'm not going to sit throughout this whole sizzle reel. I'm fucking tired. I'm going to stop. So I hope you enjoyed it. This video. Or their showcase. Or whatever. You're still here, aren't you? About 30% of you who started the video anyway. Bye. Bye. Bye.